Uh, welcome everyone to this Q&A with director Simon Liang, whose film Days is part of our main slate this year. Uh, I'm very pleased that he could join us uh, and we have Vincent Chang to translate as well. Um, I'm just gonna start by asking you to tell us how this film uh, came together. I understand that it was not a conventional uh, script or conventional process. And in fact, there was footage that you had been gathering um, over the years that eventually uh, became uh, the film Days. 我大概拍完交友就是的隧道之後我停了很長的一段時間沒拍片中間我做了一個劇場然後就後來就發展成李康生一個走路的影像的拍攝然後我大概拍了幾部之後有歐洲的那些藝術節他們非常有興趣要我去播放這些影片同時做一個劇場所以我們第一站在二零一三還是一四啊一四年二零一四年我們去的普魯塞爾又去了維也納很特殊就是李康生
cinematographers start filming and documenting the, the progression and the state of uh, his uh, illness. And I thought that later on, when we look back on the footage we collected at the time, I found it very, very interesting that usually when you have uh, certain illness that you want to show in films, you ask the actor to act it out, uh, to, to appear sick. And in this case that he was indeed uh, suffering from this particular illness, not only all the way from the minor stroke to later on the, the neck uh, have some kind of issues that uh, it is not aligned properly. So when I found out that uh, the footage that we get gathered was very, very interesting, I really want to continue to document uh, his progressions and his recuperations and um, recovering from this particular illness and also the treatments received to cure this particular illness. So uh, during that time, we continue to document the process of not only receive treatments, but also we, also, uh, we moved from the urban center all the way to the rural side of Taipei in order for uh, uh, us to nurse him back to health and we documented the process as well. So I do think that uh, this is the, the impetus for us to uh, start this particular project is to document the process of the, the minor stroke to the, uh, the neck issues, to the treatments received, and also the change of scenarios from the urban center to the rural area to nursing back to health. And uh, that, became the starting point of this film days. Yeah, ,可能那个时候我心里面也有一种拍电影的概念,就是不急着要表现什么东西,不急着要,比如说我的Worker形者,我并不觉得我要马上拍完就要去参加电影节,我宁愿把它存起来,将来到美术馆再来做展演,大
he cooked the way that he go about his daily lives. And I thought that this is someone that I also want to film and deposit into the archive I mentioned before. And that's why we just a very small crew uh, that we went to Thailand and Bangkok in order to somehow film uh, Anang's daily lives and you know, the way he cooked, the way he go about his daily routine. And at the time, I didn't even uh, think about uh, whether or not the constant portions of the footage will have anything to do with Anang's portion of the footage. It's not until after three or four years when I was talking to a cinematographer about what we have gathered in terms of the footage uh, with the Kangshan and with Anang Hongshangsi. And we thought that maybe uh, there's a, a possibility of somehow integrating these two parts of the footage we have gathered and we have deposited and archived and somehow create uh, a narrative film out of them. Cool. It's, uh, it's interesting to hear you describe this because it, is, it sounds like the film is composed um, so much of uh, documentary material. Um, so I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that, that leap that can, you know, that um, moment of uh, inspiration to bring these two together. And, and I think the way the film brings them together is also um, uh, extraordinary. I think it's one of the most, you know, beautiful passages in any of his films, this moment of ex extraordinary intimacy between the two men. Um, I'm curious about how that idea came about and also working with these two um, Li Kangsheng, we know, obviously has worked with Director Sai for many years, and there's, a, a, I assume, a, a real sense of trust there. But um, to work with this um, young man who, I assume, was, was a non-actor uh, in, in that scene, I'm curious to hear more about that. So I think it's very interesting. 他们两个一起的这个这场戏里面是非常非常亲密性的这样子一个方式去表达他觉得非常的有趣觉得非常的动人那是怎么样会突然会想说在分开来拍的纪录片的素材到最后把它变成两个人在一起然后变成一个剧
啊，我呃是我的视视角在观看他们两个人的生活。那这两个人生活跟我有一种亲密度啊，多多少少都有，特别是小康跟我有很亲密的那个感觉。然后呃，这个这个外劳，我也不觉得我跟他很疏离、很很陌生，不觉得，因为我通常对外劳都有一种啊、呃、有一种特殊的情情感哦。我特别喜欢看他们，呃呃，包括我拍过《黑眼圈》，呃，那个电影《I Don't Want to Sleep Alone》那那部电影，所以所以当我把这两个影像放在一起的时候，我就觉得他，呃，我就是用我的眼睛在看两个两个人的生活或者两个身体的的状态，大概是这样子，所以所以所以呃，还蛮可，大概是三年后我做了这件事情，我就开始觉得说他应该变成一个。呃，剧情片，哦，但是并不透过写剧本的方式或者一个 idea 的一个概念的一个企划的方式来来来来呈现它，所以呃，就就思考说，那接着要拍什么东西是我的一个课题，啊、呃，要怎么拍，怎么样使他们呃变成可以相信，呃，这是呃两个发生在我身边的一个故事，大概是这样子。So when I was collecting and documenting the treatments and illness and also the life, daily lives at Anong,、uh, I didn't have this concept of making or collecting documentary materials or footage for future use. More so is just to collect images that touch me, and for me, the deposit in the archive of images. Are very important because they somehow reflect and represent anything that、uh, have very very intimate connection with my eyes and with me as an observers and will touch me so much so that I want to record them and document them and that's the reason why that、uh, the treatments I mentioned about the conscious illness and that's a certain level of intimacy that、uh, I have with. That those images, and also the daily life at Anon, that、uh, as well because of our interaction through Skype, and I became、um, or I found the intimacy、uh, between himself as a person and myself as an ob objective observer, and that's the reason why I somehow collect all these images for future use. And as I mentioned before,、uh, it is not until three or four years later when the cinematographer, also my editor, were thinking about、uh, almost like an experiment of creating this possibility of somehow integrating these two sets of footage and images that we have collected. And I do think that、uh, the images to me is very much about myself as an observer with my eyes observing two. Different people, two different bodies, and how they evolve through time. And、um, I just use the case of Anand. To me, because of his status as、uh, as an immigrant worker, which I have very very close uh, uh, connections, where I can relate to them completely, just because of my own experience as a as a director in.、Uh, Grew up in Malaysia and now worked in Taiwan. So I, I really、uh, have that kind of affinity with them, and I, I really they, their story really touched me a lot. Including my previous film, I don't want to sleep alone. It's very much about these immigrant workers. So that that sense of intimacy is there, and that really compelled me to document Anang's daily lives because of that connection and intimacy、uh, through my eyes. So I, 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 because of that,、uh, after three or four years,、uh, as I mentioned, that I wanted to integrate them with the assistance of my editor and cinematographer, and not to somehow put the footage within this framework of a screenplay, because I completely scratched the idea. I didn't want to have a screenplay to know exactly what I the storyline will be. And what I did instead is to say, okay, now there's a possibility of integrating these two sets of footage. Now, how can I then go forward and develop something without a screenplay and just let it evolve organically, spontaneously, 
and finding a new way, a new mode of making films without going through the regular or conventional mode of production within the industry. The music box uh, plays an important part in the film, and I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about the significance um, of the object and also of the music that we hear from it, which is, um, I believe it's the music from a, a Chaplin film, Limelight. 那对于这一场戏音乐盒这方面啊非常的重要那为什么要用音乐盒它有什么样的重要性那它音乐盒演奏的这样的音乐是从卓别林的这个舞台春秋里面的这一个配乐那为什么会特别选了这样子的一个不
So even though I was very anxious shooting the hotel scene, uh, I, the, what troubled me the most is to think about how expressive or how subtle I want to somehow create this particular scene in order for it to have the maximum impact. The concept of having this particular massage scene, it is something that can happen or not happen for them to meet. But for me, I think that in order for that kind of intimacy and some and tease out the possibilities of uh, that can be carried through the future uh, to the future and so also after their brief encounters has ended, I wanted to somehow uh, inject, interject or somehow put in this particular object to create some type of closure and also some type of new beginning uh, for the quote unquote storyline that I want to uh, create with this particular narrative film. So that's the reason why that uh, the, the existence and the introduction of that music box. The music box itself is something that actually I personally in real life about six months before the shooting of this particular scene in a hotel, I gave it to Anang as a gift. And uh, so that actually happened in real life, a gift for me, uh, sorry, a gift from me to Anang uh, as, a, as a gift, as a token of uh, my, my appreciation of our friendship. And the, how the music box came about is that when I was in Amsterdam for a film museum's uh, project, at the time my producer actually discovered this particular music box playing Chaplin's uh, music uh, use in Limelight. And she, uh, knows me very well that I really like that particular piece of music. And in fact, I like it so much that I utilize it and use it as part of my uh, soundtrack music in the film, I Don't Want to Sleep Alone. And it's very much something that um, to me, it, it's something I love, I enjoy, and also it turns out to be an actual gift I have given to Anand in real life six months before the shooting. And I, I just felt that uh, it makes everything come full circle, and it's a very, uh, to me, uh, a, a, a very intimate way of creating this particular moment that having these two people meet and then uh, have that component of the music box, music box with the music that actually means something very, very uh, close to my heart. Could you uh, speak to the significance of the film's title, uh, Days? Um, I wonder if that refers to what you had said in an earlier answer about the film emerging from this daily, this archive of daily life. And I'm, I'm wondering what, what the title Days means uh, to you. 就是一个片名，呃，很容易理解的一个片，一个片名，就是日常生活啊，两个人的日常生活，嗯，也也没有特别有有多大的含义啊，呃，这个片子就是一个非常简单的电影，哦，可能可能呃，我拍片的一个或
and how can I present simply images with its purest form without going into the whole uh, mode of productions within the film industry. It is something that should come out very, very uh, simple, simplistically and in the purest form. Um, and that is the reason why uh, this is a film very much about their daily lives. And I just think that it's fitting to use a very simple and very minimal title such as Days. Um, it, I think, also underscores that it is a film about uh, time, like uh, all his films. Uh, and I'm wondering if you could say a little bit about um, just working with uh, time, um, whether the sense of duration that is so important in his work is something that is um, created on the set, felt on the set, or if it's something that emerges in in the editing, uh, in, 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 in revisiting the footage, um, this, uh, you know, this experience of time that his, all his films um, create that is very particular. I'm wondering if that's something that comes um, in the shooting or in the editing or both. Well, I uh那个记者问我关于日子这个片名哈我觉得这个片名是非常没有吸引力的呃不是不是没有没有商业的概念的一种片名它更像一个诗作的一个名字嘛所以很可能我呃这这一阵子就非常希望拍一目了然的东西
reading the film title, they know exactly what they can expect from this particular film. It's about the days or the daily lives of these two actors and these two characters. So for me, it's simple to the point that it is clear for the audience to decide whether or not they want to see this film and be part of the experience. And that uh, was my intention. Going back uh, to the questions asked about the, the, the temporal elements in all my films, I do think that this is something that I'm very used to. It's my old habit. This is the way uh, I make films is to enjoy that uh, the not a lot of actions happens with the actors or the characters. Very much everything happens is within the context or in the backgrounds. So for the opening scene, for example, for when Lee kang was sitting there without any movements or even uh, emotionless or expressionless, but in the back, you will hear and see the rains, the wind, and the tempo and the, um, the sound of the wind and the rain in the background is, some, is something that I actually want to capture even more so than the motionless or emotionless uh, actors and characters. And my actors, especially the Kangshan, we have been working for so long together, they know my way of making films and what I am trying to capture. So that long duration of time with that static shot without any interruption, the actor know exactly how to somehow position themselves and continue to quote unquote act with, uh, until I finally say cut. And so that is actually a, a very, very long footage later on during the editing process. Then I will decide how long of a duration within that long, long takes uh, that I have captured that I want to use. And of course, I do realize that the duration that you see in film, the final product in this particular film, usually uh, it not only tests the limit of patience for an audience, I will say that it surpasses the, the, uh, the ability and the patience for the audience to somehow uh, look at or watch and gaze uh, for such a long period of time. But at the same time, I do think that that has a lot to do with my museum practices and museum pieces and exhibition is that I want to somehow uh, give the audience the decision whether or not they want to either walk away from this particular viewing experience. They can close their eyes if they want to, and I do think that it is that uh, the, the, the right length or duration for a scene, I as a director is someone who can decide how long I'm going to give you. But at the same time, you as an audience, you have the decision making power to decide how much of it you want to be part of. And as I mentioned, if this is not for you, you can walk away. If this is way too long for you, you can close your eyes without going through the in entire duration of the images that I'm presenting. So to me, that's how I see uh, the way I treat time and the temporal elements of my film. Uh, I know that you've shown work um, in to the museum and gallery settings um, and also VR um, in the last few years, but um, I'm not sure if you're aware that um, we are showing the film. The film is showing um, at a drive-in in in New York uh, because of the regulations or, you know, because of of, of the pandemic. So I'm wondering if if any of his um, directed size films have ever shown uh, at a drive-in to his knowledge. Mm, Um, it has never been shown this way before through drive-in and uh, I think most all uh, most of them they were shown indoor with the museums or uh, cinema yeah. Uh, 
可以选择自己的方式，也许躺着，也许靠在一个柱子旁边啊，或者抱着一个枕头，呃，都有的啊，呃，或者睡在地上都有的。说我让我让美术馆观看电影这个事情变得非常非常的自由啊。呃，反过来，呃，我也在台北的戏院去上一个非常像美术馆的电影，啊、呃，比如说呃，《Your Face》，好，你的脸，啊、呃，也在也在纽约电影节放过，啊、呃，那我把整个戏院装置成是一个美术馆的概念，让观众进去好像他进到了美术馆，我也做这样的事情。嗯、so As I mentioned, that、uh, most of the, my films actually were shown either in cinema or museums, or in drive-ins. I, I do think that people tend to view films very differently in these different environments because it presents completely different atmospheres.、Uh, when you watch a film in the cinema or you watch a film in a museum, it's definitely a lot more comfortable to view a film and watch a film in、uh, cinema. Whereas in museums,、uh, it's freer for the audience to choose how they want to watch and view the films. They can lean on the wall, they can be lying on the floor, cuddling up with a pillow, and it's just、uh, there. You know, you can decide how you want to watch and consume that particular、uh, work that I have present. And in fact, I also have experimented with one of my、um, viewing. Opportunity is to create the museum experience in a cinema, which means that I present the film "Your Face." Actually,、uh, was shown、uh, at New York Film Festival、yes. in the past. So I sh- I showed this film in a cinema that I have transformed into a museum space. So that on the one hand, yes, it is、uh, in the cinema, but at the same time, audience will have the freedoms. To decide how they want to、uh, consume or、uh, watch and view the films, very much like the, the the museum setting. So that's almost like a hybrid of these two. So I have tried that before. So just one last question.、Um, you know, the, since this project、uh, originated from an impulse to document、um, or just capture Li Kangsheng's illness. Treatment recovery.、Uh, I'm wondering how how is he how is he doing now? Uh, 大概好了八九成吧。好，他他，因为他的他的他这个脖子的问题是呃非常难解决的，是后来是需要靠自己非常多的复健哦、呃，做复健才逐渐逐渐的呃康复。大概但是也没有康复到完全哈。啊，不过他已经可以很，呃呃，已经可以工作了啊。他现在人正在中国，啊，刚刚拍完一部长片，啊，然后呃，他正正现在台北正在上演上演他一部呃今年拍的一个商业片，哦，所以他呃比比拍日子的时候好很多，啊，呃，拍日子已经。呃，去泰国的时候他已经好好了不少了，但是呃，现在更好一些啊，都需要他呃，不断的不断的去复健，所以他现在没什么问题。嗯 ，So I would say that he's probably eighty to ninety percent recovered.、Uh, even though it's not fully recovered, I think that's a great improvement from before. And the illness and the ailment that he suffered from with、uh, his neck is something that is very, very complex and、uh, difficult to treat, and it takes a lot of rehabs in order for him to actually nurse himself and、uh, to recover fully. And right now, it's about eighty to ninety percent and capacity, and、uh, he's working.、Uh, and in fact, right now he's in mainland China shooting a film, a feature film there, and currently he's. Uh, commercial film is showing、um, in Taiwan right now,、uh, and the audience would have the chance to see his work、uh, in that commercial film. So he's he has been working,、um, but、uh, his status in terms of the the illness that he suffered from, it's it has improved quite a bit.、Uh, not only when we went to Thailand for the scene that they、uh, met. 
um, in the hotel, he was already somehow much improved from the 2014 when he first suffered uh, the, the minor stroke and later on the, the, the neck issues. Um, he has already improved quite a bit. And now it's even more so that he is, uh, again, as I said, almost fully recovered and he is very, very active and, uh, in terms of his work in different film productions. Well, we're glad to hear that. Um, and I want to thank you so much for, uh, for the film, for being part of the festival this year and for joining us for this conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.